And you said Kenny was specifically doing um like Afrobeats for Afrobeats artists. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, he works with a lot of Afrobeats artists. So he's running his ass to, you know, places like Nigeria, different parts of South Africa, West Africa and stuff. And those locations are notorious for having a lot of bot traffic, right? Like so um there are just like certain countries that like, that you know for a fact if you hit them, you get a lot of bot traffic. Any lot lot of places in Africa, Brazil, Mexico's on there, India, you know what I'm saying, Indonesia. Um, a lot of places that can be high quality markets depending on what your end goal is and what type of music you create. But the reality of it is that they all have a lot of bot traffic. And US has a lot of bot traffic too. I know like for whatever reason, like Detroit. When you target Detroit, Detroit is a hot spot for a lot of bot traffic. I don't know why. I don't know who. <laughs> and Detroit is setting up bot servers, but it's a thing. You know what I'm I've seen it yeah. before. And so, yeah, it's something that I'm telling them, like, yo, you're going to have to be aware of that because the markets that you want to build these artists in are like hotbeds for bot traffic. So you especially shouldn't be looking at what Facebook and TikTok and right. man, YouTube in some degrees is telling you because, like I said, more than likely 40, I don't, I don't know I don't know the exact numbers. I don't want to give a stat and, you know, not having anything to back it up. But, I mean, I would guess probably at least like 20 to 40% of the traffic is bot traffic at any given time um, on a normal basis. And then you hit those places probably creeping closer to like 50, 60%, you know what I'm saying, uh, just because of how this stuff works. So it's like, yeah, bro, I'm not – we we teach our marketing team, like, look at it, of course, because you're going to have clients that care – and want to know and they're excited about it. But we as professionals are the ones that's supposed to know like, yo, that shit might not even matter because some of that data is probably a lot. Let's look at the data points where it can't be manipulated to that degree because like I said, bots can't, bots can click to the smart link, but they can't interact with the smart link. So, you right. know, everybody made it to that point doing something, at least a real person. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, yeah. at least, you can at least trust that data. Yeah. And it's funny, we were just talking about this and we'll, we're going to go deeper into this tiktok specific conversation but you know i was just reminding you of that time well not that time those times early on testing tiktok ads we were literally getting thousands and thousands and thousands of bots That's when we were crazy. running ads it was nothing like we've seen before i'm talking about well we'll spend like twenty dollars and see like, like ten thousand clicks or some ten thousand clicks yeah. we're like oh shit man this is what it's like to catch a platform early with the ads these numbers are crazy we're about to run it up but then you look those ten thousand clicks came through but on the the uh smart url literally no click throughs mm -hmm. so like no click throughs like we've been running it long enough it was like it's no way our targeting is that bad yeah exactly <laughs> like there's no way it's that bad so you know, they fixed it now. Obviously, like we actually are like running campaigns or with TikTok ads for some clients when it makes sense and all that stuff. But like at that point, it was arguably like a hundred percent bots clicking our ads, which was that shit was stupid. And you know, TikTok wasn't really giving us the help that we needed on what yeah. exactly was going on. Yeah, I think we stopped running TikTok ads for a long time because that too. I, I think yeah, because yeah, that campaign was Taj, Taj Keaton's campaign. And then I don't. I think the very next TikTok campaign we ran might have been Nick D's where we used TikTok ads because he was only like our second ever TikTok ad client. Yeah. And so, and then from him on up, yeah, I don't think we got our trust back with TikTok ads completely until maybe around the Nick D time. So between that, that probably been about three, three, four months in between. No, nah, that was longer than that, bro. That was well, yeah, because Taj would have been the mm -hmm. fall before, and then Nick D was the spring of the next year. So it was probably yeah. like six, seven months in between, at yeah. least. Yeah, because you know how we would, you know, we'll test with people that are the client clients and test for ourselves and all that stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it was, it was a good minute, and now I would say TikTok ads. Yes, we we have a higher trust, but at the same time, just like, you know, you we started a conversation, you were talking about Facebook ads. Yeah. Right? It's any platform, hey, you still got to be mindful and pay attention to the numbers and see if it's real or not. Because not only do you have the hotbeds, okay, you can fix that ahead of time, get your targeting right, but then you also have just weird moments in time where mm -hmm. for whatever reason, whether the, the AI somehow finds one of those pockets of bots, or maybe... I don't know, somebody's running some type of bot campaign or test themselves. You never want to just assume that it's all real. You got to pay attention to the data. Yeah, bro. If you don't see the data making real actions, don't trust it. That's how I feel. Like, like, right. I said, like a thousand clicks don't mean anything if I don't see a thousand conversions. Or, I mean, well, I guess, not, I guess it's not fair. I don't expect that. But if I don't see a significant amount of conversions or streams or real people actions, 
coming from the numbers. I don't care what the platform is telling me. Yeah. <laughs> Let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general, trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you, and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you'll get those, those ad reps that be, oh, your campaign's going great. You know, you got 10,000 clicks for $20. You're like, yeah, but like only 30 people converted. Like, what's, what's up with that? Like, are you telling me that 9,000 people thought this shit was trash? Like, is it, is it that bad? Why did they click it? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, why are you lying to me right now? What's no going way. on? <laughs> no way, no way in hell, bro. And I mean, you know, it's interesting because you still have the bots that people run into when it comes to, you know, doing these campaigns with playlisters. They mm -hmm. have the bots they run into, or shoot, that's usually more intentional for the content and stuff, like when you post your own content yeah. and things. But running ads, it's crazy. And that's the part that's so painful to pay. Right, mm -hmm. pound for pound, <laughs> for buy after buy after buy after yeah. buy, <laughs> and that's like the one place that we f we feel like we should be able to trust it. But yeah, the honest, the guy is true. It is not you can't trust that completely either. So you always have to pay attention to your data because you might just have this one one off campaign that's completely as bad as what we had, which was near a hundred percent bots on a few campaigns. It's been a couple of years since that now, but at the end of the day. You just got to know that this is the game that we're playing. And as long as real actions are happening, you know, is it worth it? Because that's what you can judge. We still find effectiveness in ads. The difference is, let's just see, let's just say you did have bots and it was like 10% bots. Mm. If you increased your click-through rate that the platform says 10%, is that still a good click-through rate? That's how you got to look at it, right? Yeah. All right, so it's like if it still matches out in the results, the the plays, the streams, the ticket sales all match out to something that's feasible to you and it's worth it, then it should be you know you're good. Yeah, it's like a it's a necessary evil of the job, bro. It's like you know construction workers expecting like a rock to fall in their head. You know what I'm saying? Like you go into some <laughs> jobs, we're well, not expecting, but you know being aware that it could happen. Hey, you know what I'm saying? That's what you wear the hat for, yeah, bro. Exactly. That's what you put on your marketer hard hat. That's all you say. Exactly, bro. <laughs> so it's like it's, it's gonna happen. It's going to happen on every platform, so there's nothing you can do about it. But, yeah, you have to look for the silver lining and all. Like, I mean, going back to that, you know, the, the early TikTok act situation, if we had 10,000, those 10,000 bot clicks, but it was at least like 1,000 real people converting out of it, I probably would probably say rent it because that still would have been crazy. Like $20 for 1,000 conversions would have been crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, or whatever we spent. So I look at campaigns like that. We'll still get campaigns like that sometimes. It's like you can tell it's a lot of bot traffic, but – we'll do our cost per click or our cost per conversion based on the SmartLink data. And then that still lines up with something that is worth it for us. We're not be like, okay, Facebook is saying we're getting, I don't know, an eight cent cost per click. But then based on the toned in conversion, it's saying we're getting a, a 22 cent cost per click. I'm like, 20, I'm still pretty happy with 22 cents. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. well, I'm still down to keep that going. So we'll let exactly. them know, like, hey, keep it going. Like, let's keep running it. Exactly. So like that's that's really just the way to look at it. We know everybody does encounter those things. And if you want more information, by the way, on how to join our program, you have to apply, go through a call. It's not something we just let everybody in. But if you want more information in it, a good place to start is we have a video called How I Made My First Six Figures in the Music Industry. So you can check the description. Hey, watch that. See how we made the money that we made as music marketers, right? Or if you even if you're an artist and you want to see how we built infrastructure and got in the game, go ahead and check out that video. You can look up the title, but we'll also make sure we put that in the description. Check that out and see if you want to be in the program. It'll give you an, all the information you need at the end of the video.